Welcome back uh, to our discussion of chapter five, which is going to cover one of the fundamental uh, aspects uh, underlying the entire field of finance, something called the time value of money. And this is actually a really uh, interesting and unique discussion that we're going to have because it, it applies basically to every individual facet of finance. So individual finance, personal finances, investment financing, corporate financing, every single subset of finance is going to be uh, completely determined by this, uh, this single idea um, that there is a trade-off between time and, uh, and value. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's interestingly, it's something that almost everyone has, uh, um, everyone has internalized to some degree, meaning uh, you personally, even though you've probably never heard the term time value of money, or you certainly probably haven't seen the formulas or learned how to uh, determine exactly what the time value of some uh, investment might be, uh, Regardless, throughout your life, you've learned to sort of internalize these ideas and, uh, and you've come up with your own uh, time value of money, uh, your own trade-off, your own framework for trading off whether you would prefer uh, money now or whether you would like to wait uh, in the future uh, for money. And so because this is so important, uh, it really is the cornerstone of this class and it's something that we're going to use in every other chapter. So uh, these problems, while uh, they may seem new and uh, certainly unusual and, 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 and possibly difficult in the beginning, uh, we're going to work so many of these problems but that by the end of class, uh, my hope is that they seem very easy and straightforward for you. Uh, and certainly, you will find that you'll have occasion to use these, uh, these formulas or, or this knowledge in your personal life going forward. Uh, so... The next time you, or maybe the first time you buy a car or buy a house, uh, you'll be able to use the concepts from this chapter and the next one to get a good understanding of what is actually going on and what the banks are telling you and what the contracts are saying. Uh, all of these things are determined by the, the concepts that we're going to talk about today. And, and so the basic function of the time value of money is actually pretty straightforward. It says that there must be a difference between some amount of money received today and some amount of money received in the future. Uh, and that the difference is going to be determined by several different things. Now, I think the easiest way to illustrate this is to play a game. And if we were in class, I'd, I'd make you play this game. Uh, since we're not in class, I'm just going to ask you to play it. I, I think it will really help illustrate to you uh, the way that you've already internalized this idea, the way that you have personally determined your own time value of money, even though you never had really a word to put, or maybe never even gave a thought to it. Okay? So the way the game works is I'm going to give you two choices, a choice between some amount of money now and some amount of money in the future. And at each choice, I'm going to ask you to pick one or the other, either the money today or the money in the future. And then I'm going to give you another set of choice and another set of choice and another set of choice. So I think it'd be interesting for you to, as we're going along, just to write down these options. So, you know, if I tell you, you can get a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow, then just write down one or one and then circle the whichever one you prefer. And then as we move through, I want you to see how those choices change, because that's going to illustrate your own personal time value of money. Uh, in a way that me talking about it and giving you academic definitions maybe can't do as well. Uh, okay, so here's the game. Uh, the first choice is between a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow. Right? So I want you to pick. If I imagine that this is a real thing, uh, and we do sometimes run uh, up in the experimental economics lab up on the third floor, we sometimes run a game where we actually give you these choices and we actually pay you out the ones that you pick. So imagine that you were in that scenario and you were going to get the money from me the next time you see, I, we, we, uh, I see the class. Okay? So you either get a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow. Right? Now write them down, circle which one you pick. And then think about why you picked that one. Right? Those of you that picked a dollar today, maybe your thought process went like this. Well, it's the same amount of money. Why would I wait till tomorrow when I can just take the dollar now and I can go do whatever I wanted with it, right? A dollar's not gonna make me rich. 
it might buy me a soda or it might, uh, you know, go towards my lunch, uh, but it's not going to change my world. Why wait till tomorrow? Who cares about waiting till tomorrow? Right? And those of you that waited till tomorrow, you might have a, a, a different way of looking at the world. You might say, well, you know, actually, I don't really need the dollar right now. I don't have any soda to buy. Uh, maybe I have plans tomorrow and I'd rather just grab the dollar tomorrow and that way I won't spend it on something dumb today, right? Now, the second choice, and it's important to note that I'm not criticizing or judging any of these choices because time value of money is a personal choice, right? And you'll see that as the choices get more stark, as they get more different, right? So the second choice is, would you rather have a dollar today or five dollars tomorrow, right? And hopefully, right, most of you guys would have chosen the latter option, right? So even if you pick that you'd rather have the dollar today when the option was a dollar tomorrow, if the option is five dollars tomorrow, hopefully you've seen that the value of waiting a, a day outweighs the value of getting a dollar now. Now, maybe that's not true for everybody. Maybe some of you are like, you know what, actually I really, really want a soda right now. And if you give me that dollar right now, I'm gonna go buy the soda and that will give me so much more happiness than coming back to your office and trying to find you tomorrow to get that five dollars. Maybe I'll forget, maybe I'll wake up too late, maybe I'll remember on Wednesday, uh, and I won't be able to get, I won't be able to get my $5 because I forgot. But I would imagine that most of you, if you, most of you chose the $5 option. Okay, so choice number three. What about a dollar today or $5 in a week? So a dollar today or five bucks seven days from now. Right? Again, just write them down, one and five and then circle the one you pick, right? Now, what I want you to think about again is, what underwent your thought process there? If you chose a dollar today, why was that different than choosing a dollar today when the option was $5 tomorrow, right? So what about the difference in time between tomorrow and a week from now potentially made you switch? You say, well, a lot can happen in a week, right? And that's probably true. So many of you, if you switched, and, and those of you that chose a dollar, maybe that was what's going under your thought process. That a week from now, lots of things could happen. Maybe I run out of money because I paid uh, a bunch of other people the dollar today. Maybe I get hit by a bus and I don't show up to class next week. And so we, uh, you don't get to see my $5. Uh, there's all kinds of risks involved with time. Now, a week is not a huge amount of time for all those things to happen, right? Presumably I show up and pay you a dollar in a week, but again, maybe you just don't wanna wait a week, right? You might forget, all kinds of things might happen. You'd rather have the money now. And those of you that chose to wait, that chose to take the $5 in a week, maybe none of that stuff really impacts your decision-making. Maybe you think, you know what? I'd rather have the more money, even if I have to wait a week. I'd rather have the $5, even if there's a chance that I might forget, or there's a small chance that he gets hit by a bus, or there's a small chance that for some reason I don't get paid out what I thought. Right? And again, that's a personal risk preference. You're, you're, you're deciding whether the risk of time is, over, over, is outweighed by the benefit of the additional value. Okay, so choice four. What about $10 today? or $20 in six months. Right? Now, there's a big, big difference here. One, I've upped the ante in the beginning. Two, I've lengthened the time that you need to wait for the additional value significantly. Right? So again, write them down, 10, 20, circle one. Think about why you picked what you picked. Right? Those of you that picked $10 today, maybe you think, well, six months, right? If, I, if, if you were worried about the risk, potential risks that, uh, of waiting a week, well, if you're waiting six months to get that extra $10, maybe that's totally not worth it to you, right? Six months is a long time. It'd be a whole new semester. You'd be in somebody else's class. You, you would have likely forgotten all about me. In fact, when we play this in the lab and we give this choice to people, like 30% of people that choose this six month option forget and don't show up to pick up their money. Right? So that risk is real. And maybe you recognize that in yourself or, or again, you're worried about any other myriad number of risks or you just don't wanna wait six months. What's $10 for six months? That's, that's not that much money for you to be waiting all that time. You might as well just take the 10 bucks now 
and 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 go enjoy it. Okay. And those of you that waited 20 months or that are willing to wait six months for 20 bucks, again, maybe the opposite is true. Maybe your focus is is not so uh, focused on the now. Maybe you're just like, hey, twenty dollars is more money. I'd rather wait six six months for more money, regardless of any of these potential risks that might happen. I'm gonna remember. I can set a reminder on my calendar to go get the twenty bucks. And hey, if I forgot and my reminder and my calendar rem reminds me, then I, I get this nice twenty dollar windfall that I wasn't expecting. Right? Okay, choice five. What about ten dollars today, or a hundred dollars in six months? Right? Or uh, let's make it let's make it crazier. What about two hundred dollars in six months? Right? And again, so round them 10, 200, circle which one you picked, right? And I bet a lot of you switched. I bet a lot of you would, that wouldn't have waited six months for 20 bucks, would be willing to wait six months for 200, right? Or potentially you were sitting there thinking, eh, 200, that's still not enough for me. I still wouldn't want to wait six months to get 200 bucks. What if I forgot? What if he forgot? What if he got another job and left, right? What if any number of things happen? 200 bucks, it's not that much. I wouldn't want it. And then at the back of your head, you were thinking, well, if he had said 500 bucks, then maybe. If he had said 1,000 bucks, well, sure, I'll wait six months for 1,000 bucks. The difference between 10 and 1,000 is huge, right? I'll take the risk of all those other things happening in order to get 1,000 bucks in the future, right? And now look back at all your choices, right? For a lot of you, maybe you always picked the money now, and that's to totally reasonable. You have a strong preference for taking the money now for, uh, or perhaps a strong preference for not waiting, for uh, maybe thinking more deeply about the risk of waiting, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. You prefer to get everything up front, uh, and, and then uh, the, the extra value is less important to you. And for many of you, maybe you had totally the opposite reaction. You always picked the money in the future. You were willing to accept whatever risks may come in order to get an additional value uh, in the future. And again, that's also totally reasonable uh, that uh, your preference is to wait and try to get as much value out of any of these choices as you can. But I, I imagine for the majority of you that there was some switching back and forth, that in some cases you preferred the, uh, the, the money now, and in some cases you preferred to wait and try to get additional value despite the risks. And that's probably the most common outcome is that we find that our time value of money actually has a very defined framework. Even though you've never sat down and written all of these choices out and thought about all the consequences of all your different choices, you have internalized some decision framework whereby you think, oh no, that's too long. Oh no, that's not enough money for me to wait for. Oh, maybe that's too much risk. Um, and again, uh, that's what this class is going to be all about. We are going to try to put a framework, help you put a framework so that you can more uh, consciously make those kinds of choices when they are, are, are proposed to you and, uh, and so that you can make fi better financial decisions overall. Now, the last choice I want you to think about, and this is just sort of uh, up in the air, is, uh, is sort of a weird one, right? And, and it's one that I think, again, is really going to help you understand your own personal time value of money choices. So uh, the last choice, and, and this is one that obviously, even when we play in the lab, we can't pay out, but uh, the amount of money that you're offered today is $10,000 versus a million dollars 20 years in the future, right? So this is a big choice. And for me, this is a really, this is a more difficult one. You know, in, in, in those first five choices, it, it's relatively easy for me to make a snap decision and, and, and go with it. But in this one, I think you really have to think about these things, right? Because $10,000 is not a trivial amount of money. I could pay off a car or pay some of your student loans. It could, uh, you know, you could start an investment account and start saving for the future. It could pay off medical bills or, or any kind of, uh, you know, emergent uh, financial situations that you might be experiencing, $10,000 is would go a long way towards a lot of those things. On the other hand, a million dollars is a life-changing amount of money for most people, right? If you get a million dollars, you could pay off a house, you could, uh, 
uh, certainly pay off student loans. You could, uh, you know, start a business. You could start uh, saving for retirement. Uh, some particularly frugal people could potentially retire on a million dollars uh, with the right level of investment, and, and if you keep your spending low enough. So uh, that's a that's a lot. Of, that's that's an amount of money that should make anybody uh, think twice. On the other hand, twenty years is a long time to wait. All the risks that we talked about earlier, eat every one of those risks is compounded uh, the longer you have to wait to to collect the money. Twenty years. There's a good chance that lots of us aren't around anymore. There's a good chance that we've all forgotten about this deal. There's a good chance that we can't find each other or contact each other anymore, right? If you're over 20, think about what your life 20 years ago was, right? If you're 21 years old, 20 years ago, you were crawling around uh, in diapers on your parents' living room floor. 20 years from now, who knows what your life is going to be like? Right? And waiting 20 years is, is a long time to wait. Okay, so again, think about these choices because these help define your personal preferences. And again, it's personal preferences. There's no right or wrong answers there. And what's more, we have found through lots of experimentation that those personal preferences, your time value of money, your risk aversion, in other words, your decision whether you wanna bear the risk in order to get the higher amount of money, changes. Changes over time, right? So you can imagine that if you're young, Maybe 20 years doesn't seem like that long. And you say, oh, I'll only be 40. I might as well just wait till I'm 40, get a million dollars. That'll be great. But if you're 80, right, then all of a sudden waiting 20 years to get a million dollars seems like a pretty pointless endeavor because the chance that you make it is pretty slim. And even if you do, what are you going to do with that money? At least if you take 10, 10 grand now and if you're a pretty healthy 80-year-old, you can go blow it all in Vegas one last hurrah, right? So it changes over time. It changes because of life situations, right? We've seen that people get more and more risk averse, meaning they are more and more likely to take the money options that are uh, the, pre the present money options, the money now, uh, when they have major milestones in their life. So after they get married, after they have kids, uh, all those kinds of things make people be, uh, make people much more appreciative of the money, the sure amount of money that they get uh, rather than trying to wait and take the risk that they might get some amount of money in the future. So uh, this is not a static thing, the time value of money. And, and we shouldn't expect it to be. Uh, the, the distinctions here are, uh, are really nuanced. And because they're different for everybody, they're also going to be different uh, across time for lots of different people.